Hello everyone, my name is Halsey. Welcome to another Sunday School lesson from the Kojak Legacy Edition. Don't forget to like, to share, to subscribe, or even to leave a comment. This is the third lesson in Unit 3 of our winter quarter. All the lessons in February is focusing on live justly in the reign of God. Bible scripture for today, Sunday February 18 is taken from James chapter 2, verses 14 through verses 26. Lesson title is, Show Your Faith by Your Works. Before we go into our lesson, we will have prayer. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your word of truth. Help us. Help us, Lord, to serve you in spirit and in truth. Help us, Lord, not just to claim that we have faith and do nothing about our claim. Help us to put our faith in action. Help us, Lord, to show what we have claimed and we say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for every person that listens and that watches. We ask, Lord, that you will open up ears to hear and hearts to receive. And we said thank you. Bless every teacher. Give understanding. Give encouragement. Give strength. And we say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings and all these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This lesson is outlined and it is divided into three sections. Section 1 will deals with benefiting the faith. And that's verses 14 through 17. Section 2 will deals with dead faith and that's verses 18 and 20 section 3 will deals with a tested faith and that's verses 21 through verses 26 lesson aim is that we review of uh, the connection james makes between faith and works that we express what it means to declare one's faith by performing good works and then we consider a faith statement and identified how it may manifest itself through works. Our lesson today is a continuation of James's letter to uh, the believers on why the practice of one's faith in a day-to-day -day living is more important than one's statement of faith. And this a practice would include uh, the works that we do daily, our daily actions, our daily thoughts. James uh, insists that those who have a saving belief in God, those who receive the gift of salvation through a faith, through trusting in Jesus Christ, those who accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior, they are expected to act out that trust. They are expected to act out that faith. In other words, belief that leads to no change, that leads to no actions, that leads to no works is dead. The works do not save anyone, but our works reveal the character of our trust in the Lord. The works is the evidence. It's, it's the revealer. It reveals uh, what's in our claim. Just claiming to have faith is not enough. Unless what we're claiming is producing, we're just claiming. And our claim is dead and useless. Our faith is comes with actions. That's uh, James's claim here. That's his argument. 
If we said that we have true faith in Jesus Christ, something has to shift. True uh, faith, genuine faith, produces good works. We will now go to section one. It will deal with benefiting the faith. That's James chapter 2, verses 14 through verses 17. Reading from King James Version, verse 14. What doeth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? And so here, uh, James, he will begin to make uh, the case that genuine faith in Jesus Christ results in genuine change in actions of every believers. True uh, faith will be accompanied by actions. And uh, what is James's point here? His, his point is that to merely claim to have faith is not sufficient. Anyone can claim to have faith. True, genuine faith has to produce some kind of good works. Works doesn't save us, but true faith transforms us. True faith transforms our conducts our thoughts if our lives uh, remains the same remains unchanged then we don't really have a uh, true faith and you know James he's not saying that our uh, works save like he uh, asks this question uh, a man says he has faith and have not works can faith save him He's not saying that uh, works will save us. Works doesn't save any of us. We are saved by God's grace through our faith. What he's saying is that if we believe and if we genuinely believe in Jesus Christ, something has to change. We cannot remain the same and then claim to have true faith. And this right here, it causes a lot of controversy it even uh, sometimes seems as if uh, James and Paul is on two different pages. But no, they're on the same page. And we will see it becomes clearer as we go forward into the lesson. Verse 15, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace. Be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needed to the body, what doeth it profit? And James here, he begins to paint a picture to illustrate his point. And that is, suppose uh, you see a brother or a sister in need, in need, Need, they need food, they need clothing, and you just say to them, well, goodbye, or God bless you, or have a nice day. I hope you stay warm, or I'll say a prayer for you. James' question is, with a respond like that to such great need, what good is our faith? If that's uh, the case. What What is the benefit of our faith? This uh, picture here that uh, James uh, painted is not hard for any of us to understand. The question is, how do we respond to these needs? Do we brush them off? Pretend like we don't see them? As James says, do we just Wish somebody well and, oh, I'll just say a prayer for you. And do nothing about it. Then James here says, if that's the case, what we're claiming as faith is useless. It's dead. Because as believers in Jesus Christ, something should be shifting in us to have some kind of 
compassion. Because of who we are in Jesus Christ, we have a new nature. The Apostle Paul put it this way. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, he says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, look, all things are become new. Did you hear that? Become new. Something has transformed in us. The Holy Spirit lives now lives in all believers in Jesus Christ. True believers, that is. Something has become new. And that newness should cause us to put our faith in action, put our belief and our trust in Jesus Christ in action. Why? Because again, now we are one in Christ. We, we are a union with Christ. We shouldn't be living the same old way. We should be becoming that new union that we now are in Christ. Paul, he also talks a little bit about this in Colossians uh, chapter 2, and we'll start looking at verse uh, 6, and he says, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus uh, the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught abounding uh, therein with thanksgiving. And you know, I hear uh, Paul, he uses uh, the illustration of being rooted in Christ, uh, just like a plant uh, draw its nourishment from the soil uh, through their roots. So we draw our life-giving strength from Christ. And the more uh, we draw our strength from him, the, the more we become like him. And if Jesus Christ is our strength, we will produce good fruit. That is James's point. Back to the lesson, verse 17. Even so faith, if it had not works, is dead, being alone. James continues uh, to make his point about genuine uh, faith. Again, just simply claiming something does not make that claim true. If we say we believe, but we does not do anything to support that belief, to show evidence of that belief, then we do not actually believe what we're saying or what we're claiming. James is making it very clear that genuine faith in Jesus Christ is active and it's transformative. You know, our salvation, it's about placing our trust in Jesus Christ. And when we place our trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, something has to change. We will then uh, become uh, new, we transform. Their transformation uh, will take place. We start acting differently. And if not, Paul has something to say about that. In 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5, Paul has uh, something to say about remaining the same. Verse 5, he said, Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know you not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. And Paul again making it very clear. You see, we have to examine ourselves when it comes to uh, these kind of claiming. He said, examine yourself. And see if you're in the faith. And see if you pass uh, the test. See if you pass uh, the faith uh, 
test, the genuine of faith test and, and, and are approved by God. See, we have to see these things for ourselves. We know, we knows what goes on in our hearts and God looks in our hearts and we know uh, what we're, we're standing on and what we're believing on. And if it's genuinely there, something will change. We will now go to section two. It will deal with dead faith. Verse 18 through verse 20. Verse 18. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. And James' argument right here is very practical. Show me. Show me what you got. I need to see some evidence. Again, uh, James is not saying that we're saved by works. No, he's not saying that. We are made right with God through faith and not, not by obeying the law. No, by having faith in the Lord, by believing in Jesus Christ and submitting our lives to him. But our good deeds and our good works, it shows that we are committed to the Lord and that our commitment to the Lord is real. Deeds of of loving service and, and helping out and meeting needs. That's not a substitute for uh, our faith. However, it's a verification of our faith in Christ. It verifies who we are in him. Our faith is being transformed into actions and doing good deeds so somebody can see and they shall see of the good works that we do and glorify the Father which art in heaven because we're not doing it from our natural selves. None of us have any good in us to do good deeds. We can only do good because of who we are in Christ and because we are now new creatures and are transformed into this newness and we're becoming more like Christ. And that is why James is saying if you're claiming this a real genuine faith, then you have to start showing something. Verse 19, Though believest that there is one God, though does it well, the devils also believe and trembled. 20, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? And you know, the question uh, that James asks back in verse 14 is key right here. Having a knowledge about God is not the same as trusting in God, as having true faith. James here says, even the devils, even the demons uh, know that there is one God. It's not enough to just agree that there is a God. Real faith, genuine faith, genuine trusting genuine believing, genuine uh, depending on uh, God, it involves trust and obedience. Again, it's not enough to just say, I believe. It's not enough to just say, I have faith, but fail uh, to act inconsistent with uh, that belief. That true belief comes with actions. That true belief in God comes with producing good fruit. And sadly, one, you know, one can spend their whole lives, their entire lives stuck in agreeing, in knowing, without ever trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, without ever crossing over into true faith without ever crossing over into living true faith just agreeing and believing and claiming and never truly transform never truly believe just claiming and james called that kind of claiming vain dead and useless we will now Go to section three. It will deal with 
tested faith. Verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Now, uh, here we see how uh, James, he turned now to Abraham as an example of living faith. James will now use uh, the Old Testament to, to d demonstrate his point about living faith. Abraham was shown to be justified by works of obedience. Abraham was obedient uh, to the Lord. So he showed his faith by his action, his obedience. His obedience expresses his faith, in other words. And that was uh, when he offered up his son as a sacrifice to the Lord. Abraham was already justified. This didn't justify him. Abraham was justified by faith. If we take a look at Genesis chapter 15 and verse 6, and it says, And he, meaning Abraham, believed in the Lord. And he, meaning the Lord, counted it to him for righteousness. So Abraham was justified, meaning being made right with the Lord by faith, by believing. James's point here is that Abraham put that belief, that faith into action when he offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar. He believed and he put that belief in God in action. Back to the lesson, verse 22. Seest thou how faith worth with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And James here, he's using uh, the term justified to refer to the proof, the Abraham's proof. Abraham did something so others could see. Abraham's a belief counted him as righteous. And his works, his acts of obedience, his work was his acts of obedience. And that, that became his evidence of his faith. They worked together. So Abraham's faith, believing in God, was working together with his works, his obedience to God. And as a result of the works, Abraham's faith was made perfect. And so uh, we're continuing to see that uh, James and Paul, they're not contradicting uh, each other. Actually, they're complementing each other. And, you know, when we take a look at uh, Paul's writing, Paul's writing are known for emphasizing that we are saved by grace, by God's grace through faith. Ephesians chapter a two, and starting at verse eight, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. None of us can boast in working for salvation. Salvation is a free gift from God. And uh, that is always a Paul's claim. Paul emphasizes on our eternal salvation in God. Whereas James, he highlights our actions. How our actions prove the nature of our faith. Verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled which said, said, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. And we see here how Abraham believed. We continue to see Abraham believed in God. And one uh, must be uh, a believer in Jesus Christ to be counted uh, righteous. One, I must trust in the Lord Jesus Christ 
And that trust is our saving faith. A submissive and repentive heart is our saving faith. When we express uh, that faith in God, God forgives us and credits uh, us with his righteousness, with his eternal life because of our trust in Jesus Christ. When we come to Jesus Christ by saving faith like Abraham, we too becomes his friend. That's what he says in John uh, 15 and 15. John 15. And we'll start at verse uh, 14. 14 says, You are my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants. For the servant knows not what his Lord does. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my father I have made known unto you did you hear that and uh, this is a uh, James's point there's no way we acclaim uh, true faith and we're rooted in Christ we're called his friend the Holy Spirit is in us helping us and we don't have nothing to show for it come on at some point, we have to have something to show for it. That is James' whole argument. Show something for it. He's not saying that uh, we're saved by works. All he's saying is the true, genuine faith that we have should produce in some works, some good works. Somebody should be able to tell who we belong to, to make it simple. Somebody should be able to tell that we're not the same. Something has changed. Something has shifted. To the lesson, verse 24. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. And again, we see how James continues to make his case. That those who truly trust in the Lord naturally will have a desire to participate in good works. Something will change in our desires to start becoming like Christ, thinking like Christ. And again, uh, James's whole point is if we say we believe, we must have something to show for it, have some evidence to show and that is how also how our faith grows. Our faith grows when we take action. We take action. We put our faith in action and it grows. And it's showing uh, those around us who we belong to. They uh, will know us. They, they'll get to know us by the, the way we behave. Our lifestyle will show them uh, who we now belong to. So if we're claiming this faith, and we don't have anything to show for it. My goodness, James said it's dead. It's useless. Verse 25. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out on another way? 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead dead also and James uh, he make reference back to uh, the story with uh, Rahab um, back in uh, Joshua chapter 2 when uh, Rahab uh, hid uh, the spies that came to spy out the um, city she hid them and helped them to escape and in this way uh, she demonstrated faith in God. She demonstrated faith in the Israelites' God. And as a result, she and her family were saved when uh, the city uh, was destroyed. And, and James' point here is that uh, Rahab's actions, it revealed that her faith in the Israelites' God was more than just 
a, an opinion. It was more than a just a simple agreement. She believed in the Israelites' God. It was a trust in faith. And again, uh, the key word here and throughout this lesson uh, is trust in and belief. And her action uh, demonstrated and shows us that she had real faith. Uh, uh, Rahab, she courageously trusted uh, the Lord, the God of Israel. And this trust was evidence of her good deeds. She wasn't uh, deemed uh, justified by her works. It was by her faith. And she put that faith into actions. And her action was the evidence of that good deeds of hiding the spies. And James, he used verse 26 to drive the point home with one a last illustration. A faith without works is just as dead, just as a dead body, just as a dead body uh, without a spirit, just like a person without a spirit, spiritually dead, same thing, in uh, the same way, in the same way, faith, whether it's in the form of religion or whether it's in the form of family identity or intellectual uh, knowledge, faith that does not accompanied by good works is not a living faith. It is dead and uh, the the spiritual implication here is very clear. Works less faith is not saving faith. Works without faith is not saving faith. And James's uh, his teaching here can be summarized this way. We are saved by faith, and saving faith produces good works. Those who lack works prove that they lack saving faith. There you have it. And so in closing, a final thought. As we go through this week, let us have an aim. Let us have an aim to understand that we need to do more than just making a statement of our faith. Let us have an aim to make up in our minds and put our faith into action. As our believers in Jesus Christ, as followers of Jesus Christ, uh, we need to put our faith into actions to display and to represent our God, to represent his love, to represent his kindness, to represent his mercy, to represent his compassion. When uh, we look around us and we see the increasing disparities uh, between the haves and the haves not, we need to to look around and spread the love of Jesus Christ, not only in words, but in deeds. Each one reach one, transforming uh, the lives of hurting people, letting uh, someone know that Jesus loves them by the things that we do for them. Don't just say, I'll say a prayer for you and God bless you. Do something tangible. God is depending on us to do it. And this will conclude our lesson. If you have heard something that was helpful to you, please give a thumbs up, share, subscribe, or even to leave a comment. But most importantly, remember, we are building the kingdom of God together one lesson at a time. God bless you until next time. Bye-bye.